Follow the ring. Follow the ring. Ready? <laughs> Did you catch me? How you do, my gorgeous friends on the internet? Google had their developer conference thingy. And oh boy, I want to do a reaction video on it. Let me know if you want to see because they announced all these cool new APIs for CSS and HTML and the rest of the of the thing. Um, and one particular CSS property caught my eye and uh, it's been brewing up in the background. Um, it's containers. So containers allow you to essentially change your CSS properties according to a container size rather than a viewport. And I'll show you a quick example from scratch right now and Tailwind on how we can put this to use. So I think you're going to be excited. If you want to see a full reaction of like all the things that they discuss in the developer conference thingy, like I know they did stuff like scale and transform and all these other stuff are now separate. So it's easier to animate. And then there's pop pop-ups and geez, Google pop-ups are ready. We barely got ad block installed. You're trying to get rid of that. Okay. So what we doing? So I just have a wee. What do I have here? Nothing on the page. Okay, just so we can clearly show what's going on. Okay, so I have an app right here and I just made two cards here. So let's import those right here. And these cards are just empty, right? They don't have anything on them. One, two, three. And as you can see, I also passed them two B properties here. So we can do image and I'll set that equal to uh, these images that I'm importing from uh, yeah, it's just like my public folder. Okay, so nothing crazy. Okay, so let's add these images. All right, so you're making your component, you're all happy, not even knowing what's coming up. Because you're, you know, don't tell me you don't know, you know you're gonna have problem with responsiveness. It's gonna look wanky and it's gonna look funny in a position or another. Okay. Cool. So we have that. And then we can also pass, I guess, a title. So let's just say, uh, ch check out my blog. Okay. And then we can just take this and I'll duplicate it here twice. Okay. It doesn't matter what it is. We can do view in 2023. And here we could do vite for performance. Okay, cool. Anyway, let's hit save and see what we have. Okay, so we have card one, card two, and card three. So that's fantastic. Now, it doesn't have anything yet, but we'll make it now. So let's just add just like a text large on this, make it a bit bigger. We can do a font of bold. There we go. And then we can add a bit of spacing. So that's fantastic. So again, in Tailwind, the approach that we like to do is rather than to try to design it on desktop first, we go mobile because we have those breakpoints like SM and LG and MD. And the way you do it is when I'm styling it here right now, I'm doing text large, or if I had a whiff here or anything, that automatically I'm gonna assume that's for mobile. And that's what Tailwind kind of recommends you to do as well. And then when you're scaling up, right, the website, then you want to add your breakpoints like LG. Okay, so when it reaches to LG, then start messing my content up. Okay, anyway, so we got that going, which is nice. And then here, I'll just drop in a paragraph in here. I'll do lorem 60 and hit save just so we have some text going. Cool. Okay, so that's all nice and dandy. And then I guess we could add a button here as well. And we can say read more and I'll just add a couple of class names to this. So I'll just make the font bold like that. Cool. And then we'll add a margin top of four just to make some space, a background of black. We'll do a text of white. So there we go. And then we can do padding X of four, padding Y of two. We can add a rounded of medium to it. And that's starting to look pretty cool. I'm happy with that. That's fine. It's just a wee example that we're making anyway. Okay, so that's all nice and dandy. So how would we start making this responsive? Um, well, you'd probably go. Let's see. Let's see what we're doing. Let's go here. And we'll add a class name. Let me just expand it out now because we're going to be messing around with this eight for ages. Okay. So let's just go to our main, not main, our app here. This is what I meant, the main here. 
Okay, so first of all, let's add some margins, right? So you do M4, all right? So if we check the mobile version now, as you can see, the M4 applies anyway, like e everywhere, even if it's small or big, it doesn't matter. That's what I'm meaning, like it's a baseline start. So there we go, we have some padding. So that's not looking too bad, right? And that's, that's pretty cool. Okay, like there's spacing that needs to be done and stuff like that. So we could do just like a grid and a gap of 12, right? And hit save. Okay, so now we have some space. And I guess you could add like a background of like slate of 100, just, just something. And then the cards, we can have it uh, just white. So BG white. Okay, so now we actually have a bit of like separation between what's going on here. Okay, cool. So hopefully you can see that background color. What we can also do is add a wee rounded here. So let's go to the top and say rounded to Excel. Okay, cool. Let's have a look. Okay, so it's rounded as well. That's nice. Uh, let's add some padding as well. I'll do a P of 12 and this inner diff. And there we go. So that's, yeah, I mean, not bad, right? It's looking quite okay. And just the image is the final thing that needs to be uh, rounded as well, around that. And yeah, I think that's it. Cool. Nice. Oh, okay, so by default, let's see what we have. So we have our content that looks like that. All right, so we haven't done anything. So by default, again, nothing's really gonna happen. Okay, so how do I want this card to look on the big screen? Well, let's say I want it to be kind of like display flex, right? Um, so like the image is on this side and the text is on this side. Okay, so how can we do that? Well, let's go here on the image first of all, and I'll just say, hey, on large screens or on extra large screens, make sure my width is a quarter of that. So this is the cool thing about Tailwind already that it just allows you to do these viewport uh, breakpoints super easily. Um, and yeah, see that works. So now when our image reaches more than like 4XL or XL, I should say, in like screen size, it'll make the image a quarter of its size. Poof. Cool. And now the only thing that we also need to do is add a display flex to this. Um, so what we can do is, yeah, just go to the container and I can say the same thing. On extra large screens, make sure you make it display flex. And there we go. And then we can just add a bit of spacing with a gap of like 12. And cool, so there we go. So that's, I mean, that's pretty good already. Poof. So you could just like call the day on that and be like, done. I finished my responsiveness. Uh, yeah, that's fine, that's fine. But what if you, let's say, look, I'll show you something. Let's go to the app.js here, right? Let's say I want two of these cards, uh, kind of make like a column out of it. So I can say grid calls two, like that, hit save. Okay, so I like the way this looks, like the style of it. Uh, the problem is, you might reach these certain points now where if you go like here, right? Like that doesn't look good. That looks quite horrible, doesn't it? So it's like these points where you might struggle with. And then here it looks fine again. And then that doesn't look good again. Oh, as you can see, this just stays like that. So I guess we could add like a large, right? Or Excel the way we did it before. Okay, let's try that again. So. Again, that still doesn't solve this weird issue where the viewport is at a funny, funny angle now. So it's it's not XL, uh, but it's this size, right? So this looks fine again. So as you can see, it's just that like awkward middle ground between it, and that can change depending on what you do here, right? You can do grid calls. We're still at the end of the day relying on the viewports and basing our styles on the viewport. The idea with the containers is that you you'd essentially be able to drop these components anywhere and it's just gonna figure out its own 
like uh, sizing and the position it should be in, regardless of the viewport. Here we go, at Tailwind CSS container queries. So if you install this, and then if we go here to our card, and rather than do in this, where we added Excel of flex, and we added Excel of one by four, we can change this to at, and then do the size. But be note that the sizes here are different. So like the Excel that Tailwind uses is 1,280. But this one, if I do an Excel, it's like 36 RAM, all right? So again, to match it, we need to do something bigger here, unfortunately. But let's look at this again for a quick sec, okay? So as you can see, our image is one by four, right? Because we're on large screen. But as soon as this is not a large screen anymore, this is going to be full screen now. Uh, however, if we change this LG and we'll add the at symbol, and let's just do something quite big now. Uh, we'll do like 6XL, okay? So we'll just add that in front of it. And now take a look. If the width of the actual container... Oh, we actually forgot to do something. That's why it didn't work. We need to add a container to the parent div like that, okay? So add at container, and then you can say at 6XL or whatever XL. And now take a look at that. So now our actual, let's do that as well. We'll do this one as well. We'll do bo both properties, 6XL, hit save. Okay, so now as you can see, when the card is bigger than the 72 RAM, it's automatically gonna put the size, regardless if this is in a grid, in a flex shrink, flex grow, flex whatever. Uh, and when it goes down, as you can see, we still maintain this cool column grid that we're working here. Uh, and then if we go down, see, we don't have that weirdness anymore of maybe the paragraph being stretched out weird. And then we can still keep the, the viewports, that's still fine. So if I want to, um, you know, here in, in my thingy, right? If it's not Excel anymore, just switch it over and just get rid of the columns for me. That's still fine, but look at that. At least everything still keeps a consistent look to it, as you can see. So basically here, this is where the, the viewport query kicks in, boof. And it just jumps back to that default one. So that's really cool. As you can see, if again, if we go back to just using um, just viewports, then we are not really caring about the element itself. Okay, so that's it. I hope you learned something new. I am going to use this everywhere, to be honest, because it's fantastic and the browser support is great. So thank you so much for watching. If it was helpful, drop a like. I really appreciate it. I would really appreciate it. And also check out my courses in the description. The latest one I released is the Next 13 course, uh, where we're building out a full-on e-commerce website, which is lovely. Oh my God, I feel like I can't speak today, so I'll just let you go. Okay, bye.